beautiful day. What a beautiful creature. Black, orange, and yellow. I've never seen a bird. orange tip on its wings. Let's have a little bit more discussion about artificial intelligence. I am pleased with the rollout of artificial intelligence onto computers. I looked at the Apple announcements, I looked at the Computex announcements, I I've watched dozens of hours on artificial intelligence. I spent over 20 years professionally writing software and studying software development and applying it in the real world. And I was compensated for my time building software systems for major corporations and very intense operational environments such as warehousing, manufacturing, supply chain, as well as administrative situations involving HR, engineering, and finance. And so my experiences have given me an insight into the nature of information technology, the nature of computers. and. What I want to do in this discussion is just create a bookmark for myself so that um, I have covered this in the past. You know, in the year 2050, I can look back and say I have actually covered this. And what I want to say is that artificial intelligence to the great disagreement of many that I have spoken to because when I talk to people I tell them I say artificial intelligence is not actually it's not actually intelligence it's not actual thinking the way that you you experience as a human being in your mind but it is also not computer intelligence it's not it's not thinking in the way that we define thinking. And when I say thinking, and when I say intelligence, I'm being very broad in that. Intelligence is a incomplete word, or it's not, it's not, it's actually not broad enough to reflect what goes on with a human being because we do work through what we experience as emotions. We feel things. We feel, sometimes we feel fear. We can feel anger. We can feel disappointment, depression, disappointment. And we can feel love, peace, joy, happiness. We can feel a profound sense of connectedness a profound sense of connectedness and sometimes I have the view that many of the research documents that come out when you want when you when you go to certain research publications and you read the articles over the years that says that there is a God gene that humans are pre-programmed to worship something or to have spiritual meaning as a way to maintain survival. When you go to these research journals and you see that they, they have concluded that emotions is a mechanism to survive a mechanism for group cohesion so that we can perpetuate the individuals in a group 
based on the strength of the group. You, you see an aspect in that where it's like sometimes the, the people that do the research have had a human experience that is so limited right it's vast when we talk about numbers and formulas and calculations and theories but it is narrow when it comes to successful relationships thriving encounters with other people appreciation of life of animals of plants of nature it's so narrow in that sense that there almost can be no other conclusion that these, these expressions and these feelings that people have, these um, insights that people develop, and the way that people can orient towards things that are non-mathematical, non-linear, that have non-locality, that are not purely rational and logical, you get a sense that because they haven't had success in that realm uh, to a larger extent that there has to be other explanations that are that can fit within the framework that they're most comfortable with they're the most comfortable with a a structured narrative a structured uh, frame that supposes that the, the human is a machine. The human is a machine the same way we can understand a, an electronic computer, a computer that's made out of metal, that has no, uh, that largely, I say largely, has no organic components to it, and in which the actual components are static in their physical representation. And so, when you look at intelligence from that narrow of a lens, then sure, you can reach the point where you see the intelligence model that has been developed as an actual intelligence. When, in my view, what we call AI is really the automation of the left brain. So we have the automation of the left brain. The left brain, when we use this concept of left brain, right brain, and I'm not totally bought into the idea of left brain, right brain, because I'm more of whole brain, right? I'm more of a whole brain type of... Uh, I have more of a whole brain type of perspective because I think if anytime you start doing the left brain right brain thing it's like you automatically set yourself up for for failure where you might find it tempting to emphasize one or the other it's a subtle it's a subtle uh, premise that when you implant it psychologically you can drift and you say oh there goes my left brain or oh I'm deficient in my right brain let me work on that when it's like let me just understand this entire thing and let's work it out there's some logic here there's some emotion here there's some feeling here there's some meaning here let's put it all together let's make it holistic but the inability to reason about that which we feel, to reason about that which is more artistic, more creative, more organic, the failure to do that, and the tremendous success to be able to project and magnify that which is strictly logical, strictly 
consequential, as in cause and effect sequences. It allows you to optimize or encourages you to optimize in that direction. By the way, if you haven't caught on by now, this whole discussion is, is, is grossly philosophical but it has the aspect of observing something that is very tangible, that many call artificial intelligence. And so I surmise that it is not intelligence at all, but it looks like the type of intelligence that we generally applaud right now in society. We have applauded the intelligence that is um, very good at recall very good at reciting that which is written and reciting it with almost a photographic memory dexterity or facility you know have a high facility and a almost um, verbatim regurgitation of what we've read and what we have um, you know, it's stilled within us as useful information. And so artificial intelligence largely is automating that, at that aspect away. So what will we celebrate now, right? What will we celebrate now? But again, to be intelligent is, to be, is, is yet to be truly defined. But we have, we have aligned it with things that can be produced and that, has, that largely has either economic or social uh, properties and benefit, right? So you can be socially intelligent, you can be emotionally intelligent, you can be a master of working with the personalities and psychology of others. And you can also be a master of mathematics and, and, and procedures and algorithms and discrete systems of thought where you work through a very, not strictly linear progression of ideas to reach a very firm and solid conclusion where you can then trace it back to the, the premises and precepts that form that conclusion. But you can also reproduce in many ways those precepts and conclusions in a way that delivers similar results to others that follow that course. So. That's not to discount any of that. That's very useful. That's very, that's a very efficient tool to have when we talk about the greater nature. But it's going to become very clear really soon, in my view, that the great zeal for what is called artificial intelligence is going to is going to decline because for it to actually have any real resonance it has to be materially real in people's lives and experience and the only thing I've seen that is materially useful in what we are calling AI is what you have in the and the translation of prompts into images, music, video, and the like. Right? People are not really interested in a translation of text. Not really. It's it's convenient, but it's not enough to sustain interest. Because what people really want is they want that subjective experience. They want colors, metaphor, mood, meaning feeling it's really what people want they want entertainment they want pleasure right so before I got into software I was a decades 
multi-decades long artist. I used to draw on paper and I was trained in it. But I was good at it before I was even trained. I had, I had a natural talent. I say I had because I stopped doing it. Because I didn't see a career in it. I stopped doing those things. That's why when you look at some of my videos in the last um, four months, you'll see these images in the videos. I used AI to generate those because I know how to use the language of art in a very intricate way to generate images like that. And I know that as a living being, I was drawn to that when I grew up in this world, right? I like to draw, I like to paint, I like to do poetry. I like, I, I loved all the artistic things you could imagine. But the world was shifting towards technology, and so it was time to shift with that. And that's not a bad thing, because I had reached a point where I had such a technology background that I could merge it with my art background. So if I build a user interface, I know how to use Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop to create a absolutely beautiful user interface that also worked because I wanted to build things that work because anytime you're going to craft something because I used to craft you just don't craft just to be crafty you don't put pottery to get you don't take clay and mold it and put it in a kiln under a, t a certain temperature and have you know glaze in the mix you don't do all of that for it to come out and and easily break it's not your intention you intend to craft something that's beautiful that is also functional. You know, if you're going to make porcelain, you know, yes, porcelain is fragile under the right pressure, but not to the touch, right? So you can drink out of a porcelain glass, you know, out of, out of a porcelain uh, cup and saucer and, you know, plates and, and the like. And you can have it in a, in a glass cabinet and it's absolutely beautiful. But, um, thing is is that that's going to be the future of AI for most people is entertainment creativity so that they have a tool that helps them to express that in a way where there are barriers to doing so with things like pencil and paper and paintbrushes which I had no issue with, but there are many people that do. They, they can't bring the hand, the eye, hand eye coordination and spatial uh, mastery in the physical to bring the mental onto a physical surface. But you get them in front of Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop, then all of a sudden they can do some things. But then you got people that can't really work with Adobe Photoshop because Let's admit it, there's, there's a lot going on there. So then, there's this other tool that can do that. But, for AI to actually solve your problems though, or to give you really good answers, it's really a tool that's pulling from a database that's going to give you the answers that are already there. It simply saves you the time in doing so. And that is actually pretty valuable. But artificial general intelligence, I don't see that on the horizon because, yes, there are people that are very um, optimistic about that. Hold on one moment. I just want to make sure this is still recording. All right, so my battery is down to about 20%, so I'm gonna wrap this up. But I'm gonna wrap it up by saying that artificial general intelligence is not on the horizon, because in summary, after thousands of years, the understanding of consciousness is not, is not yet there. Yes, we can we can explore consciousness through spirituality, but 
that's about the extent of it. There is no actual process for consciousness in the world of what we call science. There's, there's, there's nothing there. There are, res there's research that's being done, but there are no real conclusions that are material to interfacing what we know as consciousness and the full body of intelligence with emotions and feelings and meaning and purpose and what you would call instinct it's not it's not fully developed and it may take maybe thousands of years it could take millions of years before this form of being understands that in a way that can be infused into what we call the third dimension so that's my philosophical take on the entire matter and if you have any uh, questions or comments I'll look for those and um, I will catch you on the next one thank you a nice quiet calm day to reflect and see what nature has to offer